Hello my friends, welcome to my energy economist channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about shell gas while drilling. Stay with me. The first use of shell gas in the US can be traced back to 1821 when a shallow well drilled in New York. The natural gas was produced, transported, and sold to local establishments in the town of Fredonia. Following this discovery, hundreds of shallow shell wells were drilled along the Lake Erie shoreline, and eventually several shell gas fields were established southeastward from the lake in the late 800s. However, shell gas production had been discouraged because much larger volumes natural gas could be produced from conventional reservoirs as with the Drake well developed in 1859. This main stages in the shell gas industry from 1860 to 1970s where shell gas reservoirs discovered in the western Kentucky in 1863 and hydraulic fracturing first used in the 1940s. The 1973 and 1979 oil crisis had led the US to address energy shortages and the high price of oil. The oil crisis in 1970s propelled the US government to invest in research and development and demonstration of alternative energy, including natural gas from shale formations. Meanwhile, the high oil prices attracted private enterprises to invest in unconventional natural gas. Before 1970s, deep shell gas such as the Burnett Shell in Texas and Merciless in Pennsylvania has been known but believed to have extremely low permeability and thus were not considered economically feasible. In the late 1970s, the US Department of Energy initiated the Eastern Gas Shell Project as a series of geological, geochemical and petroleum engineering studies to evaluate the gas potential and to enhance gas production in the Eastern US. In addition, to providing R&D support, the Gas Research Institute was established in 1977. The GRI was providing central organizations to manage the public research programs that were funded via mechanisms designed to pass research and development costs through to the end customer. A few years later, the DOE was established and funding for energy R&D in general and in particular supplemental gas supplies were substantially increased. During the 1980s and early 1990s, GRI was expanded to include R&D programs addressing supply, transmission, distribution and end use. In the late 1990s, the National Energy Technology Laboratory was established. A consolidated research program led by NETL was initiated aimed primarily at preventing pipeline damage of the aging natural gas infrastructure in the US. In the same time period, GRI was recognized to emphasize near-term industry impact. In 2000, GRI and the Institute of Gas Technology which had been the R&D performing laboratory for the gas distribution industry, merged to form the Gas Technology Institute. Meanwhile, some pioneering oil and gas companies had tried to combine larger fracture designs, rigorous reservoir characterization, horizontal drilling, and lower cost approaches to hydraulic fracturing to make the extraction shell gas economic. The best known pioneering company is the Mitchell Energy and Development Corp. The company went on to test various processes of hydraulic fracturing to exploit natural gas 
as a pornic shell formation in North Texas between 1981 and the early 1990s. In a word, these efforts from government and private enterprise during this period contributed to the rapid growth in output of child gas. The output of child gas in the US increased more than sevenfold between 1979 and 2000. In 2002, Devon Energy Corp invested $3.5 billion in cash and stock to acquire Mitchell Energy and Development Corp. Devon Energy Corp added horizontal drilling to its repertoire to make shale gas wells even more productive. In the few short years since then, technology has continued to improve, drilling techniques have continued to advance, and horizontal drilling has been employed by many exploration and production companies in search of unconventional resources. The use of horizontal drilling in conjunction with hydraulic fracturing greatly expanded the ability of producers to profitably produce natural gas from low permeability shell formations. In addition, the rise in oil and the gas price since 2003 made shell gas more economically attractive than ever before. From the mid-1980s to 2003, the price of crude oil was generally under $25 per barrel. The crude oil price rose above $30 per barrel in 2003, reached $60 per barrel in 2005, exceed $75 per barrel in 2006, reached nearly $100 per barrel in 2007, and peaked over $140 per barrel in 2008. Finally, the prospect of falling conventional gas production of US since 2000 triggered expectations of higher gas price inflation in US. Gas production was in slow but steady decline in the early 2000s. In the early 2000s, it was expected that US natural gas price would rise in response to the resulting tight market. Due to growing confidence in their ability to profitably produce natural gas in shell formations, the upstream oil and the gas companies aggressively entered the shell gas business. Drilling for gas has increased sharply by the independent energy companies such as Devon Energy, Godrich Petroleum, and Exto Energy. From 1997 to 2009, more than 13,500 gas wells have been drilled in the Burnett Shell Play. Naturally, the output of natural gas from the Burnett Shell Play increased sharply. In 2004, gas production from the Burnett Shell Play overtook the level of shallow gas production from historic shell plays such as the Appalachian, Ohio, Shell, and the Michigan Basin and Trim Plays. Inspired by the success of Burnett Shell Play, oil and gas companies rapidly entered other shell formation, including Woodford, Eagleford, and the other shell plays. The proliferation of activity in these new plays has increased shell gas production in the US from 1 trillion cubic feet in 2006 to 4.87 trillion cubic feet or 23% of total US natural gas production in 2010. If you want to learn more about shell gas well drilling, you could do so in my book, Economic Study of Oil and Gas Well Drilling, which is published on Amazon. Check it out at the link in the description. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.